It is the network that binds people together. In a sense, the marketplace makes us all citizens of the world, transcending our nationalities, transcending our languages, transcending our, our religions, transcending everything. The market is the place where we each trade with others. And what do we do? We sell things that others value in exchange for what we value. We are each other's means to our ends. I want the coffee from South America. I want the, uh, the, the clothes from Europe uh, before this nuclear thing in, in Japan. I want the sushi from Japan. I mean, uh, now, I, now I have to be careful. If the sushi glows in the dark, I have to be suspicious of eating that, I guess. Uh, at least I know where my food is at every time I see it in the dark. Anyway, so, but the thing is, this is, this is a global enterprise. And it binds together multitudes of billions of people who know nothing about each other. What do you know about the people who make the food that's grown? Or the clothes you wear? Or even something as simple as the marker that I'm using, on, uh, putting on this, on, the, on this paper. And who made the paper? Who made the paper? Who made the easel? Who made the electric lights? Who, who made any of this? We don't know who they, who they are or how they did it. But all of the talents and abilities and knowledge and experiences of multitudes of millions and billions of people whom we will never meet, know nothing about, are all brought to bear for us. Just as you, and when you're out there in the marketplace doing something, will be reciprocally doing that for others who you know little about. That is what the market does. It integrates humanity into an arena of mutual cooperation, of trade and exchange to improve all of our lives in ways that we can't even imagine. And indeed, that is the role of competition. Competition, what do we mean by competition? It means to try to see who can do better or best. Try to see who can do better or best. Do you know what competition is about? Certainly in sports, that right? You, you watch the Olympics, and now they're going to run a marathon. Okay, they're going to run a marathon. And the people line up at the starting line, the gun goes off, and they start around. The, was it the 26 miles, 27 miles, whatever. That's how we find out who's the fastest runner. Who can come in second? Who can come in third? There's an economist named Friedrich Hayek. It's competition that does this in the marketplace. It challenges us. And it's precisely because of that freedom of the marketplace, that gains from trade, that voluntary uh, uh, nature of it. Precisely because I can't force you to buy my product. I can't force you to do business with me. I can't force you to accept my price then I always have to be trying to make it better, newer, improved, whether by myself or in a race. I always was facing competition. If I was in an actual 10K race, I obviously had competition. The other people in the race. Now, I never made it near the beginning, of, you know, the front. I was always sort of in the middle. But I was still competing, you know, can I do a little better than this guy who's, who's obviously pacing himself faster? But more importantly than that, whether I was in the race with others or whether I was just doing my run every day, the person who I was always competing against with was myself. Can I run a little faster than I did yesterday? Can I pick up the pace? Even if I'm running a certain pace now, because I used to run around a very large park uh, where I was living at that time. I'm now, can I sprint a little faster from the park to get home? I was always, now, could I do it? I didn't know. Even to know your own potentials, your own abilities, your own possibilities, you only discover through the trial. It's sort of like someone says, well, let's suppose you were captured by the enemy in a war and you were faced with torture. How would you stand up to the torture? Nobody knows the answer to that, no matter what they say. Some person might be terrified, thinking, oh, God, I'm afraid of pain. They'll just look at me and I'll say, yeah, I'll blabber everything. The other person says, 
Ah, I'm tough. I am. I'm proud of my country. I never, you know, give up the secrets. Well, you know, it could be that the person who thinks he can endure the torture will find that he can't. And the person who is most terrified that he could never withstand the pain is the one who refuses to even give them one bit of information. But we don't. What are you capable of just as a person? You don't know. Independent of competition. It is the doing that enables you to discover. And that is as true in the marketplace. How can we know any of this other than if individuals are challenged or find opportunities to try to be competitive, innovative, improving? Indeed, that is the value of this market arena from the wider social point of view, or at least one of the benefits, is that it precisely because you can't force people to trade with you, and we're interdependent through the division of labor, and I can't get what you have that I want, which I find it either impossible or difficult for me to make for myself. The other element that is crucial to this is the price system. And this is another theme that the same economist, Friedrich Hayek, uh, became famous for. It's one of the reasons he won a Nobel Prize in economics in 1974. And uh, he wrote a famous article in 1945 called The Use of Knowledge in Society. The Use of Knowledge in Society. And he pointed out that in society there's a division of labor. We all, I've just explained that, we all know that. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. But he says more fundamentally there is an inescapable division of knowledge. First of all, to talk about a division of labor must imply a division of knowledge, must it not? Someone knows how to be the butcher, someone knows how to be the baker, someone knows how to be the candlestick maker, which others don't. So the very notion of division of labor means division of knowledge. But Hayek went on to emphasize something more profoundly important in this, let me suggest. He says that there are different types of knowledge, all essential if everybody is to successfully coordinate all that they can do in the marketplace. And that is to realize there are different types of knowledge, all of which have to be integrated successfully. The first one he talked about was scientific or textbook knowledge. That's the kind of knowledge all of you are learning in your classes. Here's your economics textbook, your finance textbook, your accounting textbook. You read all this stuff. That's textbook knowledge, crucial, essential, valuable. That's part of the knowledge that some of you will have that the others don't. If you're majoring in finance, you study things in finance that the major in accounting or banking or economics would not know in the same degree. But Hayek went on to argue that that is not the only knowledge or necessarily the most important knowledge. He also talked about localized knowledge of time and place. The kind of knowledge that you only acquire when you're working in or interacting in a certain place in the corner of the world, which you can never learn in a textbook. The type of stupid example I like to give is, you know, you, you land at your first job after college, and the boss comes up to you on your first day. Young man, young lady, here is a, a paper I need to have ready for a, a meeting in half an hour. Go to the photocopy machine and make me 30 copies. And you better have it there on time. Well, you're nervous. The big boss has noticed you. It's your first day on the job. Oh, I better do good. So you find the copy machine. You put the copies in, you push the number of copies you need, you push the start button, and guess what happens? Nothing! Now you stare there, you're starting to sweat. Oh, it's the first day. I can't make the copies for the boss. It's going to be my last day. You're panicking now. One of the other employees in there comes up and says, what's the problem? Oh, the boss needs 30 copies, and it won't work. Oh. Ah, don't worry. You just got to do this. You hit the side of the machine, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, and the copy starts spewing out. Is there anything you could have learned in your classroom that that particular photocopy machine in that particular co company had like this little quirk in it that if you kicked it in the right place, it starts working properly? You can't learn that in a textbook. That's the knowledge, localized knowledge of time and place, as Hyatt called it. Now that pervades everything your co-workers, the talents and abilities of other people in the firm, the suppliers of particular resources and raw materials, 